Hi, I'm Alex Anders, and this is Bisexual Real Talk. Who are the hot male anime guys? And if you can't think of one, does it mean that you're not bisexual? That is what I'm going to be talking about today, as well as, as bisexuals, how are we attracted to specific people? But before I get to that and the email, two quick announcements, first of which is there are chapters in the description below which will allow you to go to any section of the video that you'd like. Also, uh, I am now offering one-on-one -on -one phone calls with you all where you guys can talk to me uh, about anything you're interested in, um, whether it be about your bisexuality or coming out or issues you're going through. And you can uh, do that by checking out my Patreon page. Patreon, for those who don't, don't know, is a way for people like you to support uh, creators like myself. And I'll be honest, the reason why I'm making this video now and the reason why I am as active as I am is because of my Patreon support. Thank you for all of you who you know comment the video, but the truth is that I'm busy, so I don't get to see all the comments. But if you support me through Patreon, I see every single thing. And you know, words are uh, words are easy, actions are hard. So by supporting me, it really motivates me to continue making videos. And also, as a reward, um, there's a tier there. If you support me, we can have one-on-one -on -one phone calls where we can talk about anything you'd like, mostly pertaining to bisexuality. Uh, so that's that. So what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to first read your uh, the email that was sent in. And then I'm going to respond specifically to the email. And then I'm going to give some general advice, which I think is very helpful for everyone who is listening. So the email, and it reads, How come I'm not attracted to male anime characters? I am 18, and I have been very lonely my entire life. I'm a guy who just finds it easier to get to know and empathize with anime characters. Considering how common it is on the internet, I have found nothing wrong with it. I have a waifu, and for those of you who don't know, waifu, uh, which is Japanese for wife, um, is used to refer to like a person that you're attracted to, uh, an anime character or a, a manga character that you're attracted to. And I have strong feelings towards her, if not love. The problem is that I'm only into female characters. In real life, I have fallen for plenty of guys and women. I feel my attraction to both uh, sexes are even. So I don't understand why I'm not into both sexes when it comes to anime. I'll admit that my waifu is a tomboy, but I don't think that changes anything. I'm also very demisexual when it comes to anime characters I like. I feel that if I am truly bisexual or pansexual, I would have found at least one male character I'm into. It makes me think that I am actually more straight, which worries me because I have always been seen as straight. The very few LGBTQ people I know seem surprised that I am not heterosexual. I fear that when I was in the seventh grade and was attracted to a lot of guys, I convinced my brain that I am into them. And now I'm just in denial. My lack of attractions to guys in anime is probably compounding this belief. Don't use my name or anything. Sorry that this is wordy. Uh, have a good day. A, not worried. Not wordy at all. So, let's talk about uh, this email. And I'm going to start by saying this. As many of you all know, I am a romance author. And what does that mean, like, in concept? That means that I write fantasy. That's right. I write fantasy. Now, it's not fantasy pertaining to, you know, elves or even uh, spaceships or aliens. No. It's fantasy where the topic is relationships. So I write fantasies about relationships. And I am clear in my own head about that. But when people see our stories, uh, us who write it, uh, they tend to see something that kind of is different than what reality is. A lot of the times, people like me make attraction this 
mysterious wizard that points to someone and says, you are attracted to you. And no explanation is given. It's just something that happens and it's magical. That feeling is just so great. It's magical and lasts forever and all these things. But that's not reality. Reality is closer to what I've written in my book, How to Win the Love Game. Reality has to do with chemicals going in our brain. And in reality, there are certain paths to attraction. The paths to attraction include our senses. So a path to an attraction that we have to someone else might be the visual path. We see someone become attracted. The audio path, we hear someone. The physical path, the fact that someone is touching us is making us attracted to them. Or the psychological path. I'm thinking since what you said uh, about being demisexual towards anime characters, I think that's a hint to your attractions overall. I think perhaps that your primary form of attraction might be the psychological path. And that would also come along the lines of, you know, what happens when you're in the seventh grade. So here's what I'm imagining. I'm pretty confident about as well. When you're in the seventh grade, there was a window of attraction that, that opened there. And you looked around and there were guys. And for whatever reason, since you are driven psychologically, you saw a guy or multiple guys through that window of, of attraction and you became attracted to them. And what happened there? There was some, probably something you're going on, going on in your life specifically at that time that those people satisfied and triggered, releasing the chemicals in your brain, which resulted in attraction, whether it be dopamine, whether it be oxytocin, whatever it was, through that window during that time, you were more susceptible to it, and the guys that you were seeing were more uh, likely to do whatever it was that was triggering your attraction. And as time went on, perhaps the window stayed there, perhaps the window closed and a new window opened up somewhere else. Uh, you said your attractions are pretty even, so you know maybe it continues on. However, that's real life. Storytelling is something different. Storytelling has a structure to it. And yes, anime character, anime, you might think of anime, and for those who don't know anime, it, it tends to be all over the place in terms of like the subject matter. One subject matter could be, you know, the one the leading person could be like the devil, and they're collecting souls, and they have to go through a trial before they end up wherever they're ending up. Or another one might be from like a, a plucky female 12 year old superheroine sort of thing or maybe even like about wolves who are who are attracted to sheep and all that stuff and, and you look at this and think oh it's so diverse but the truth is that storytelling follows a particular structure a particular formula if you will and it doesn't matter whether who the main characters are if you are a successful storyteller you follow something called the hero's journey I do, everyone does. And that is, you know, some person, whether they be the devil or whether they be a plucky 12 year old girl, um, they have some sort of challenge. And then they get set onto this journey. Uh, they meet this wise wizard sort of character or teacher or whomever else that, in both, that gives them sort of, some sort of wisdom that allows them to continue forward. They continue through the, the, uh, the, the trials and tribulations. Sometimes they succeed, sometimes they don't, and ultimately they come to a point where they have accomplished their goal, that's usually the end of the season or the end of the book or whatever else. And to tell this story, you need to have certain tropes, certain types of people. And it doesn't matter whether you know, it is a 14-year-old girl or whether it's the devil. They have to have certain characteristics that, that make a person wanna watch or read it going through and you need you know certain side characters so when you're creating the structure of story you are creating uh, very specific things and now the trend is that that main lead happens to be like a female especially in anime especially a lot of places fantasy all that stuff and the, the the push is to make that character female and and the reason why that main character becomes uh, interesting to watch is because it pushes against 
our ideas of what society is. And um, so the idea of society for girls or women is to be a certain way. So you create your main character so that they, they're opposite to that or they push against it or they fight against it. And that's, that draws us to them. But if that's the trend right now, that means that the people who have those particular traits are the female characters. Now, there might be uh, animation stories out there about, you know, about gay males or something like that. And they probably would be the closest uh, equivalent to where there's an idea about what you are in society and then you push against it. So you can kind of tell the same stories with those gay characters, but maybe they're less frequent. And, you know, since they're less frequent, they're not as diverse, which means that within that group, you can't really find anyone you're attracted to and all that stuff. But what I'm saying is that... Um, if you're not attracted to someone in television or someone in the story, it has more to do with what, they're, they're, what they do for you, either psychologically, visually, audibly, or physically. And of course, if you're reading something, the physically thing is out, the audio thing is probably not in there too. So it's either visually or psychologically. And every character in a story is, is fulfilling some sort of need in that story. And that just might mean it's not particularly triggering you because of the structure of the story and not because you are not bisexual. Uh, you talk about being concerned about talking to the LGBT characters and your uh, people in your life um, about saying that you're bisexual and you know maybe you've convinced yourself otherwise. Here's what I say to that. There's always an issue with us bisexuals wondering whether or not we are bisexual enough to then talk about it to other people about being bisexual. Should you do it? I mean, you're already in a relationship. Should you talk about it? You should identify yourself to other people as bisexual if it benefits you in some way. Now, I'm not saying that uh, you shouldn't talk about being bisexual if it's hard. No. If you talking about aspects of your life makes it makes your life easier and you being bisexual and your attractions as a bisexual uh, is a part of your life that you think you'd like to share and that would make sharing it would make it easier that is when you start sharing to other people that you are bisexual so that you can relieve that psychological stress that comes from hiding an aspect of your life so yeah that's how you should determine it. But now, here's the general advice I have for everyone uh, regarding, like, inspired by this email. You know, there are people who are drawn very strongly to anime characters, to, uh, like, celebrities and stuff like that. And they feel connected to them. And, and we do, we feel you know, drawn to characters that are, or to things that we actually can't touch, we can't see, we can't talk to. Like I imagine there's at least few of you watching this who think of me you know, with some sort of strong feelings. But the truth is that I'm just like an image on a screen and I can't really fulfill, fulfill what it is that you need. And there are times when we all go through loneliness, we all do, and when we do, Having like having a large amount of your uh, desire or your attractions or um, your kind of romantic life focused on something outside, something not out there, not like someone you can actually access, isn't helpful. If you are feeling lonely right now, if you are um, are you know particularly success susceptible to the pandemic. I suggest that you find someone in your life that you can open up to. It might not be easy. Uh, you might be the type of person who doesn't share the type of things you like to talk about or that you need to talk about, about your bisexuality, about just whatever's going on in your head and your life. That might be hard to find. Um, and you might not be just inspired to do it. But the only way we can have a long-term happy life is if we have not just one person, but a village around us 
who can give us emotional support. If you're married, if you're in a relationship, or if you just talk to your mother or something like that, that's great, that's wonderful. But you can't rely on that one person because one person can't fulfill everything. So if you are lonely right now, as a kind of a, as a, kind of a homework assignment, think of someone else in your life who you can open up to. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the person that you're the closest to, because maybe they're not the most receptive person to what you might have to say. So instead, think about everyone in your life. Choose someone who you can perhaps share whatever is going on in your feelings uh, right now with them. And you may not have to, you may not like want to share absolutely everything, but share something with them. Get the ball rolling. And yes, it's going to be hard because maybe you're even an introvert. Maybe things like this just don't come naturally to you. But talking about stories, the hero in a story isn't the person who isn't scared of anything. Heroes are scared to do things. But the hero is a person who is scared to do things, but does it anyway. Be the hero that you watch in your anime, in the anime. Be the hero that you kind of fantasize about in movies and television shows. Be your own hero and do the thing that you might be scared to do. Just do it anyway. That's it. I am going to remind you that if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, you can do that by checking out my Patreon page. But until the next video, Stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler.